In this video, we'll look at vertically stretching and shrinking graphs. This will be a type of a non-rigid transformation because it takes that original basic graph and distorts it in some way, makes it skinnier or flatter. I have a picture of the St. Louis arches and I just kind of illustrated this like if I was resizing a picture and I just pulled up the corners and I would really distort the image. That's really what we're doing when we take a graph and we stretch it or shrink it. The other transformations we've looked at thus far, vertically and horizontally shifting functions, did not distort the image at all. And we do that all the time. If you're looking at a Word document and you have an image on it and you pick it up and move it left, right, up, or down, you just relocate it. You're really doing that rigid transformation. You're not changing the shape, you're just changing its location. So let's look at what algebraically represents those types of transformations. We'll consider the graph of y equals x squared, which is our basic squaring function, the basic quadratic. And we want to graph each of these functions and state how they relate to the graph of y equals f of x. So we have this function g of x, which is 2 times f of x. So 2 times f of x tells us that g of x is really just 2x squared. So for every input, this is just telling us that the output value is doubled, right? It's multiplied by 2. We're taking 2 times those original function values. So when the input is negative 2, 2 times 4 would be 8. When the input is negative 1, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. And you could also plug in, right? If I actually plugged in negative 2, I'd have 2 times negative 2 squared, which is 2 times 4, which is 8, just to confirm that that works. But again, it's saying twice the original function value, twice that original y value. So when I plot these points, I have negative 2, 8, negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, and 2, 8. So notice that I still have a parabola. I'm going to draw the graph through these points. But now I have distorted that parabola. In fact, I've stretched it upwards. So we say that the graph of g is the graph of f stretched by a factor of 2. So notice again that my change in this function was a change on the outside, right? It was a multiple of the y value. And so that impacts the y values, which we would expect then to see a change vertically. So we are vertically stretching this graph up. Let's look at g of x is 1 half f of x. Well, again, f of x is x squared. So 1 half f of x is just 1 half x squared. So this tells me for every input, my y value for g is going to be half of what it was for f. So 1 half times 4 is just 2. 1 half times 1 is 1 half. 1 half of 0 is 0. 1 half of 1 is 1 half. 1 half of 4 is 2. And again, I could plug it in if I really wanted to. 1 half times negative 2 squared is 1 half times 4, which is 2. So I plot then negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1 half, 0, 0, 1, 1 half, and 2, 2. So if I draw the graph through these points, I 
Notice my shape has distorted again, right? But it's still a parabola. And it's a parabola that's been kind of compressed or shrunk. It's like we're pushing it down. And so we say that this transformation, we say that G, the graph of G, is the graph of F. vertically shrunk by a factor of one half. So again, an outside multiplier is impacting the y values because it's the outside of the function. So let's summarize this property. The graph of y, which is a times f of x, where a is greater than, this should be 1, where a is greater than 1, is a graph of f vertically stretched by a factor of a. So if the point x, y is on the graph of y equals f of x, then the point x, a times y is on the graph of y equals a times f of x. Now if the value of a is between 0 and 1, then the graph of f is vertically shrunk. By a factor of a. So if the point x, y is on the graph of y equals f of x, then the point x, a times y is on the graph of y equals a times f of x. So again, let me just illustrate this to make sure you understand what the whole point of this is. So if I have the graph f of x is equal to, let's say, 5 times the square root of x. And I want you to express to me how is a graph of this basic squaring or square root function, how is this graph impacted to get 5 times the square root of x? And so 5 times the square root of x would tell us that the graph of f is the graph of this basic square root function vertically stretched by a factor of 5. So in fact, to get the graph, if you think about what the output values are, for the square root function, like 0, 0, that 1, square root of 1 is 1, 4, square root of 4 is 2, we'll just look at those. Then if I looked at 5 times the square root of x, I'd still have 0, 0, because I'm just multiplying the y values by 1, but now at 1 it would be at 5, at 4, multiplying the 2 by 5 would be 10, right? So it's going to stretch that graph, that half parabola up by a factor of 5. So let me know if you have any questions on this concept. Thank you very much.